。哦，好，那个我尽量讲呃短一点，因为时间已经用掉一些了。阿弥陀佛 ，So the English、yeah.。So English listener, if you can hear my voice, uh, please type in the chat box. Thank you so much. So today I'd like to introduce uh, our uh, resident volunteer. Uh, he is uh, one of the very important disciples, Master Hua. If you rename the top 10, he is definitely one. So he devoted, uh, has been devoted all his life to, to help our CDDB. So it's a very uh, touching, uh, sincere disciple. So for uh, once a lifetime, if you, know, you will have an opportunity to encounter the great master, you will be the, uh, very wonderful. So when, when he was a boy, he got the opportunity to get very close to the uh, the flu monk in Taiwan, Master Guangqing. So he really have the blessing, the doubly blessing of wisdom and the blessing of fortune. So just by listening to how he talk, then you can you can get a sense he really understand. So he can really talk from his uh, Buddha nature. So people will understand what he said. So I believe many people will agree with what I just said. So we can all not pay attention and enjoy. So, Gosu, right, our Dhamma brother, uh, he and his wife's uh, marriage was certified by the Venerable Master. Very rare situation. Uh, for example, our DRBU Professor Da Power, uh, the layman Wang, Wang Minglu. So very few occasion, very master was certified marriage. So he's one of them. So time is short, so I don't want to keep it too long. So let's pass on to Joy. So very well, Master. So all the great knowing advisors online. So my name is Joey Wei Guo Shi, my Dhamma name. It's a real opportunity. So we will have this opportunity to tie a Dhamma affinity. Even during the pandemic, it's not easy. So I really appreciate. So all the Dhamma masters, the lay volunteers, um, uh, work very hard to put this together. So try to save um, effort. So we have a Simon Tennis translation interpreter. So it was same more time for me to talk. So all the volunteers, you know, I appreciate your help, Amitofo. So today's topic uh, is my memory um, of all the stories about Venerable Master. So the Venerable Master's virtue and the wisdom uh, from my you know, personal perspective, of course I know very little. So I won't be able to know everything. So for his virtue and wisdom, so I'm way, 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 no, way, way, way little. No way to ever compare to Bible Master. 
So my understanding is very superficial. However, even just a little bit superficial understanding. So I will still be willing to share. So all of you, you know, could know a little bit. So that will be uh, today's topic. Due to the pandemic, a uh, variable master said before, in future, variable master mentioned there would be some kind of pandemic. So people should recite great compassion mantra. Probably some of you have heard about such. So this is just a reminder to all of us. Let's you know, recite more of great compassion mantra. So how can we even talk about the virtue and the wisdom of the Venerable Master? His mind is great and expensive, full of the compassion. He has no cell. When someone has no cell, no ego, he sees every living being equally. So he is, um, he doesn't have any uh, judgment how to look at beings. So in the past, when we saw him, so we would not bow to him. So Venerable Master, if he would see a senior person also bowing, he would immediately ask that senior person, sit on the side, don't bow. So this you know, senior disciple um, wouldn't feel comfortable to sit you know, on the same level side by side with the Venerable Master. So always try to pull out the chair out away from Venerable Master. Master would say that, no, 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 just come to sit with me. So he doesn't really have any of that kind of attitude, very uh, normal and treat everyone equally, particularly to seniors, he respect all the seniors uh, honor such tradition. Um, there was a uh, senior person oh, so so the this you know, senior person bowed bow down with everybody so the real master asked him no 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 don't bow come to sit with me so if you want to say anything just say it so this senior person he he spoke out he said ah oh, you know what I came all the way to USA I really would like to learn how to meditate. So the miracle master look at him, probably just like a second. And then the miracle master said to him, now you are uh, at a very old age. Uh, now you, if you want to learn meditate, mm, may not be suitable. So how about you recite Buddha's name? So miracle master immediately put a wrist recitation beings from his neck and pass on to him. So uh, the master you know, show him, okay, when you recite 10 times of Amitabha's, then you move one recitation being. So then for example, you recite from one to 10, right, Amitabha 1, Amitabha 2. So from 1 to 10, if during those 10 recitation, if you forgot, you you had any wandering thought, maybe when you get to the five or six, then you, you restart from number one again. So when you recite all the way through the whole recitation beings, so that's one recitation, then you can say, that, okay, I finished a series 
a string of a recitations. So Rainbow Master taught him how to do that. So re recite 10 times, move one bing. Recite 10 times, one bing. So how you do duty? So uh, you can recite in your mind. So you recite Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha three times. So the first recitation, you can read it a little bit louder. So the second time, the third time can be you know, a little lower volume. Then the number four can be a little bit louder and the number fifth, number six can be a little bit minor. So you don't need to recite with the number. So when you recite it with a different volume, then that will remind you, okay, three times, three times, three times, and one time, that's 10. Then you move one beam. So I give this recitation beam to you so you can use it and keep reciting. So this gentleman, um, wow, he said, I couldn't accept such a precious gift from you. And then the mirror master said, no problem, just take it home with you and keep reciting. So just such a little story, you can see how verbal master treated every being equally. Just a little story. So a uh, long time ago, the verbal master Haiden ocean lamp, ocean lamp Haiden. So he came all the way from China to, to visit verbal master. So during that time, there was no direct flight from China all the way to USA to San Francisco. So they landed in Los Angeles. And from Los Angeles, they need to figure out a way to come all the way to CTTB. So that night, the member master shared a story. Uh, my affinity with this Dharma master uh, is very, very deep. So I need to go to Los Angeles to, to welcome him, to receive him. So I heard that and during the Dharma event, I was in CDB, then I returned to uh, Los Angeles. And then when I went to the Go Huyo Monastery in Los Angeles, uh, the other day, and the miracle master already show up in the Go Wheel Monastery in Los Angeles. So there was a, a gas room, uh, very tiny, not big. So miracle master told to me, uh, we can set up this room to receive the miracle master ocean lamp. So we can put two chairs here. We can put a recitation desk here. So a uh, some extra chairs on the side. So if someone would like to join, then they have a place to, to sit. Then I was thinking, okay, so such memorable master you no, know, will come all the way so far. So probably I need to prepare some uh, tea uh, to welcome them and also the attendants. And then we, I try to figure out, okay, where to get a tea table. And then I look around, oh, there's a tea table on the side. So I try to, not too big. So I went over and try to move the tea table. So Meryl Banner saw me uh, want to move the table. And then when Meryl Master saw that, he immediately came over, try to, help me out to move the table to the guest room. And I said, no, 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 Sifu, Sifu, don't do that. The table is not heavy, I can do it myself. And Brahma Master say, no, no, I can help you, no problem. So the teacher and the disciple, okay, 
two of us, we moved that tea table uh, to the room and set it up. So that was my first time. The, the first time ever, my teacher, disciple me, we did something together. First time. It's a tiny little story. I didn't want to share, but but I certainly thought about that. So I would like to share. Because after that first experiences, I never had another chance to do something together with Meryl Master only. But after that, most of the teaching I would get from Meryl Master will be just a scolding to correct my mistakes. So the Meryl Master Ocean Lamp, uh, they were talking about the time when they were together in the Nanhua Monastery in China. So Ocean Lamp Master mentioned that, oh, there was a little boy, do you remember when we were all there? So that little boy was kind of helping out some farmers around the temple, uh, provide some kind of shoppers, you know, watch the asses. The... So that little boy spent that three months and memorized the whole entire Shuangama Sutra. Another three months, that little boy memorized the Lotus Sutra. So they were talking about those old stories they were together in China. So the Rebel Master Ocean Lam, he is from Sichuan. So it's a kind of local dialect in Sichuan. So it's a very strong accent. So when two, they talk, kind of interesting. They could understand each other even you know, with such very strong accent. So the verbal master Ocean Lamb's attendant has a very strong physique. You, know, you could easily tell that person really practice a lot of martial arts with a very bright spirit, um, can really kind of carry on heavy duty, kind of like a nat national guard. So, so during that time, I tried to kind of listen to the conversation, try to translate in Mandarin. Otherwise, I barely could you not know, understand their conversation. So, Venerable Master Haydn, uh, he was with uh, the Venerable Master Empty Cloud in the Yunji Mountain, the Cloud Dwelling Mountain. So, they spent some year together over there. So, he mentioned uh the master empty cloud so i would like to share so he mentioned uh master empty cloud was already very very old probably age of 110 or 113 years old very very old so such a senior person so every morning, the master empty cloud would always wake up in the morning to do the farming, farming work. Sometimes spend all day, all day in the farm. So there's a ditch, very deep. So they put a, like a little uh, bamboo to kind of, so people can cross over that ditch. So he saw the very massive empty cloud, you know, cro cross over that deep ditch and then carry something very heavy and then look at empty cloud cross over that tiny little um, stand on the bamboo and cross over the ditch. Well, we know that the 
memorable master Haydn Ocean Lamp, he also practiced martial art all his life. So he can actually jump very, very high. He can jump on top of the grass. So when he jump, his feet touch little on the top of the grass, he can bounce, bounce back, he can jump over. So he can jump on top of grass. Then he could even uh, do the standing upside down using one finger, one finger standing. So it's kind of quite amazing to, to see him, such a remarkable person. So he, he said that he himself, he can even jump on top of the grass. So even I myself, in the middle of the dark, I couldn't see clear. So for such a senior person, and then also try to be very frugal, doesn't even carry any lamp. So even myself, uh, I wasn't even very sure I will be able to cross over that very deep ditch just on top of the bamboo. But the miracle master empty claw, he could just like, just like nothing. Just gently kind of walk on the bamboo and cross over that very kind of deep ditch. So sometimes miracle master empty claw cross over that ditch. Oh, and they think of something he forgot. So he will, he will go back to pick up something and come back again. So keep crossing over that deep ditch on top of the bamboo. So, and then when he look at that, I mean, Master Ocean Lamb, he said, wow, I, I might so even worry about the empty car. So, so one of the attendants said, oh, maybe I should set up a lamp for you so you can, you can carry your oil, oil lamp. So that will be easier for you to see. So Empty Cloud uh, scolded the attendant. The entire 3,000, 10,000 world is all bright and shining. Why do we need to you know, leave up an oil lamp? No need to do that. So that was a story shared by Master Hayden about the story of Empty Cloud. Um, our very old master, he was so kind. So when he was 19 years old, so if I um, uh, mistakenly to kind of mention the different year, uh, don't don't bother, please just look at the book, the biography of the Marvel master. So when he was 19, right, his mother passed away. So he made the 18 great vows. So the number 12, so number 12, he would, um, he would suffer all the difficulty on behalf of all living beings. So that you know, is one of the Burma Master's you know, great vows. So in the Avatansaka Sutra, we probably, you probably all very familiar, particularly the chapter about the Samatabhasura's you know, conduct and vow. So the great 10 vows of the Samatha Bhajra's Bodhisattva, number four is about uh, making offering universally. So when you make a offering, just like an ocean of lamp, such a great, tremendous amount of the virtue of Mary cannot even compare to make an offering of Dhamma. So, among those Dharma offering, the seven, the first one is you embody the Dharma. So Mary Master taught us the six great principles. So he mentioned to us, as long as we practice those six great principles, that is the best offering to, to Mary Master. So the the number one, all the way to the seven, all different kind of the offering. So seven kinds of, of offering mentioned by the Samadha Bhattras, you know, Bodhisattvas. So all these kind of seven kinds of offering 
are all gray, but the offering of the Dharma is the best. And the embody, embody the Dharma is wonderful. So our memorable master, he is willing to suffer on behalf of all living beings. So one time we had the ceremony of the water land. So the Lingyan master, Zhen Chan master, Qing Ding master, all those great masters, they came uh, from China to CTDB. So we probably have about a hundred masters. So at that time, uh, the lion house and the host winning house, the two dormitory, I think Meryl Master, he stayed over there. Those great master live there. So Meryl Master would go over to these two dormitories to see them and make sure uh, they are okay. Do they need uh, more heating so they don't get too cold? So each room will probably have like at least two or three masters living together. So um, one of the one of master uh, got sick uh, uh, while he was living in the dormitory. So other Dharma master mentioned that when we, when we finally got the visa approved, then he got sick. So he had that kind of hiccup. So every a few seconds, then you will have a hiccup. So how even it's not big deal, but if you have such a hiccup every other seconds, how could you endure that? So the venerable master asked, so how, how, how would you deal? So venerable master concerned about his, his illness. So venerable master uh, concerned about his illness. So while he was checking on him uh, during their conversation and the memorable master uh, uses you know, healing hand and then took away his illness. Then as long as the memorable master stepped out the dormitory, memorable master started to have hiccup every other second. So I saw when I saw that verbal master, he took the illness from the Dharma master to himself. So just think about the, so if a living being would, would get reborn in the hell, so need to jump into the boiling oil you know, pit and then the knife mountain. So how could you know, someone be safe if they will need to go through such tremendous amount of summary suffering? So the memorable master, he had no worry, he would just do. So memorable master was so skillful. He helped out that Dhamma master with you no know, constant hiccup. He didn't even uh, let him know. He did that you no know, quietly. And then without letting the person know, and then he took away the illness and passed on to himself. Another compassionate story, probably is 1991 or 1992. So um, liberal masters uh, started to have some uh, illness. So at that time in, in Los Angeles, a couple with two kids They went through a lot of difficulties, suffered so much. They, they suffered so much in USA, they were thinking maybe should move back to Taiwan. So they, they figured, okay, we probably should visit a variable master before you know, we move back to Taiwan. So they asked me, how should I go uh, to CTDB? Uh, what's the driving direction? So I explained to them. 
drive all the way from Los Angeles to CDDB. So I didn't know, you know how this family would go, when they would go, but I just explained the direction to them. So this, this whole family, uh, they didn't know anyone in CDDB. So they didn't call anyone, they didn't make arrangement. I didn't know how they would go. So they just, they just pretty much just decided to go. So one afternoon, verbal master came to the administration office. I was late at the time in CDDB administration office. Verbal master asked around. So if you have ever visited, so you probably would know that. So, so the from the administration office all the way to the roadway, probably about 20, 30 feet. And we have a, a street lamp there. So master was standing there looking around. And then we have no idea why he was standing there looking around. And then not long, now this family's car arrived. So the couple and two kids now drove all the way to CDB. So this family, they never met verbal master. So they, they were not so sure who is this person, but they've got a feeling, they got a feeling, no, this, this monk standing on the roadside must be verbal master Hua. So this whole couple, they step out of the car, they, they kneel down, they bow and cried and cried. And then this lady, this mother, uh, she, no, she didn't learn Buddhism. She didn't know uh, how to act properly. So she held Mirable Master's feet and cried out so loud. And then, but Mirable Master didn't scold her, know why she would touch a monk, but the Mirable Master just let, let her cry, holding his feet. And then she just keep talking, you know, we, we suffer so much, we, We try to we try to apply the uh, the citizenship of the green card in USA, and then they probably were already been rejected like probably twice. So at that time, the rule if you got rejected three times, you probably just couldn't do it for the rest of your life. So the verbal master encouraged them to do it again. So the family, they decided to, to go for another application, try it last time before they will move back to Taiwan. So that lady, uh, she took Viral Master's photo uh, to the interview. So the, the officer who would interview their application, citizenship application. So that officer, uh, say something. Yeah, he said that I'm not the right person to interview you. So the officer didn't say yes or no, just said that I am not the person who should interview you. So when the family heard such an answer, oh, oh so that probably say no, because if we will have to go back and come back to be interviewed again, so probably our last chance will be gone. So if you uh, live around in the Los Angeles areas, you probably know that the, the IRS office is a second floor. So you had to go up to the second floor to be interviewed. And then the first floor people waiting there, try to uh, contact some family members, try to ask for some advice. So the family came down to the first floor. So they called CTDB, try to talk to Maribel Master. So Maribel Master was resting at the time. So the attendant, the attendant said, oh, no, you know what, you called the wrong time. The Maribel Master is resting. But the lady said, oh, no, the Maribel Master said to me, 
I could call him anytime if we have any problem. So the attendant said, oh, okay, no problem, let me pass some. So the manual master picked up the call and then she said, oh, manual master, I think we probably will be rejected. Uh, our interview was rejected, so I probably will move back to Taiwan in two weeks. And then the, the lady was talking to Meryl Master. Uh, Meryl Master said, no problem. So they were kind of like a miss, you know, missing complication. So maybe Meryl Master didn't listen to what I was talking. I mean, safe on the lady. So she was kind of very sad, okay. Maybe I should you know, start to pack my you know, furniture, the things and move back. So a few nights uh, she dreamt about member master. So the master in the dream and then the member master asked, okay, give me your passport. And then in the dream, she passed on her passport to member master and the master uh, wrote okay on her passport and returned the passport back to her in her dream. So in the, in two weeks, the whole family received four green cards and then she couldn't believe that. She, she couldn't believe that. Um, so I was kind of had a, had a second thought whether I want to share this kind of story in public because you know, it has been more than 30 years. So that's probably long enough, that will be okay. So I just want to share you know, how compassionate, how compassionate the metal master. So he tried to help living beings. So another story in the Gold Wheel Monastery in Los Angeles. So if you have ever been there, the previous Gold Wheel Monastery on the sixth street. So at the end of the evening lecture, at the end of the lectures, everybody will gather around the variable master and master will say, okay, if you have any question, you can ask me. So people will sit around a, a circle. So one, one mother and a child. So the child probably, probably seven years old, a boy. So a mother and a boy. So, so they came to see master. Um, the mother said, that, oh, my son, I don't know why. He is kind of a little bit weird, a little bit strange when he was the first grade. Uh, in the playground, I saw a lot of girls, a lot of girls running around in the playground. So the little boy said that to the mother. So one time, two times, three times, four times, every time, so the mother kind of worried, worried a lot about the boy. So the mother would like to read a lot of magazine, a lot of movie stars. So the mother was kind of reading the, the movies, movie stars, those magazines. And then, and then the little boy um, said, oh, mother, you are looking at that movie star? That movie star looks like a skeleton. So the mother feel that oh, such a beauty, handsome movie star. How come my son will say, no, this person is a skeleton, skeleton. So the mother took the boy to see a psychiatry. So the doctor said, oh, no, nothing wrong. Your boy looks totally normal. So the mother just you know, tried and couldn't find any way to, to deal with such an issue. So finally, um, they found the Go Wheel Monastery about Master Hua. So the mother the, to the boy to see Master. So very well Master was sitting, si sitting in Lotus and then reach out his hand to the boy and ask the boy, what do you see in my hand? 
my left hand. So he asked the boy, what do you see in my palm, in my hand, my left hand? So I also look at the master's hand. So what the boy said, the boy said, oh, I see a red colored ball in master's hand. Okay, the master asked the boy, what is in my right hand? So the boy said, it's a rope. Okay, and then the master reached out the left hand again. Again, the boy said, oh, there's a like a braidless kind of jade place. So the master didn't say yes or no. He just kind of smiled. So I asked the boy again, so what do you see of me? What do you see on me? So when you look at the, the painting, the poetry of Buddhas, you probably see the aura kind of shooting out behind all those you know, Buddhas on the back. So the, so the little boy said, oh, I see those rays shining you know, from your back. What color? Oh, red color. What color? Blue. And then the master keep asking that little boy. And then master unfold his legs and point point to the painting of uh, Amitabha. So everybody look at that, oh. So the master said to the boy, you have to cherish such you know, ability. Normally after 15 or 16 years old, uh, such ability will just get lost. So our volunteers in the Go Wheel Monastery told to the mother, hey, you should tell the boy to come to the temple more often. And then the Venerable Master turned to that volunteer. Why do you say that? You take care of your problem. Why do you want to say that to them? So the Venerable said that, uh, you don't try to climb the conditions. You worry about your issue. So the very well master, uh, how he you know, treated those uh, beings, living beings, he didn't ask anything in return. So why very well master was scold uh, that disciple who asked the, the mother and the son to come to the temple more often. So that's the reason master scolded because he asked nothing for return. So another story, yeah, there is a, a, a person with a young you know, granddaughter. So, so this person uh, kind of helped her to cook in the monastery. And then, but uh, this person helping out the temple, but also taking care of the little granddaughter. So, so this lay person will just you know, carry, carry the, the little daughter and uh, the granddaughter on the back. Why this person will be cooking in the kitchen? I think it's a grandmother, grandmother and the granddaughter. So this grandmother was cooking in the kitchen, in the temple. And then she didn't know the verbal master was standing right behind, behind her and the granddaughter. So verbal master uh, was kind of blessing them behind, kind of reciting something, use the mudra. And then she didn't know at all because she was cooking, right? So uh, when I saw verbal master uh, encounter them, uh, this grandma and the granddaughter, Normally he was just scolding, but behind their back, you no, know, he was helping them. So the mirror master uh, teaching or compassion, it's just like a, a metaphor. For example, 
just like a little drop of water. Mm, also the metaphor, just like our consciousness. So one, one thought is like a little drop of water. Second thought is like another drop of water. So when the second drop of water merge with the first drop, so you have this kind of emergent experiences. So also explained in the Shuangama mantra about the thinking skanda. So how can you penetrate the thinking? How can you merge the previous thought and the second thought? So how those two thoughts can merge? So, so the very master explained that passage, how can these two thoughts be merged? So it's not easy to distinguish distinguish the merging of these two thoughts. So you are you are thinking skanda skanda to climb the conditions. So this kind of habituation should be should be letting go. Yeah, if you don't do that, you have a first thought and then the second thought will come along. So we gather in our thought, our thinking, skanda. So one thought by one thought. So you will be able to gather your thought. Don't look out to climb the conditions. So another story uh, I may want to share. So how to let go? How to, how to live up yourself? Sometimes um, a person uh, did not uh, trouble you, but you probably just don't like this person. You, you just don't want to get close to this person. You don't want to get close to this person. You cannot let go. You cannot let go of this kind of thinking. So this knot, this tight, will pull you down. So this kind of thinking will tie you up, pull you down. So you, you're going to be just you know, react to this person with those kind of dislike. This person didn't, didn't treat you bad, didn't treat you any different, but for some reason, yeah, you just don't like the person. You have this kind of dislike. So I went to a temple in Taiwan, probably in the Buddha Hall. Uh, that was a time Venerable Master visited Taiwan. The Master mentioned that uh, we want to have a transmission of the precept for disease for the, for the past one. So, so we set out a tent and then that small temple, everywhere just kind of packed with people who would like to receive the precepts for disease, disease who pass away. So for the person who like to hold that present, will hold a plaque with the person who passed away. So all the all the person, all the people will be kneeling down holding the plaque with the name they hold on to. So the volunteers, um, by the end of the ceremony, Need to need to gather all the plaque. That's the end of the ceremony, the precept transmission. So the volunteer gather all those plaque uh, in the plastic bag. So the master asked me to burn, burn this plaque in ashes. I never did that. 
So I kind of, okay, I'll do it. So I took over all the plastic bag with all the, with the name on the plaque. So I had no idea. Um, after I gather all the plaques in the plastic bag. So when I step out of the Buddha hall, certainly a wing, a cold wing kind of blow to you. So I carry that plastic bag uh, to the place I could burn all of them. So I feel that uh, I shouldn't just dump the plastic bag in the, in the fire pit. So I probably should just you know, get those plaques out one by one and then reset Namo Amitabha. And then the wind was blowing very loud, very, very swiftly. So what if you no know, one of the plaques get blown out by the wind, I won't be able to catch them. So the wind was blowing very hard. So I was so afraid, you no, know, those plaques will be kind of blown out by wind. So I was kind of burning those plaques. And then certainly one person show up, try to help me. And then this person happened to be the person I dislike the most. So, and then this person talked to me, hey, Miracle Master sent me over to help you out. So then with this extra help from this person, I dislike the most. So I was able to, to burn all the plants you know, smoothly. So certainly uh, my negative feeling to this person melted, disappeared. So I found out that all this were happening in my mind. Actually, it's my, my not type myself up, nothing to do with this person. So I was I was wondering how could Burma Master knew that I dislike this person the most and he sent this person to help me out. But everybody was very busy you know, for this preset transmission. So and then very ironic, ironically, I received such a big help from this person. So my not just melted. So five more minutes. So another story I could share. So since we want to talk, let's talk about the old stories. The first time I got scolded, scolded by Meryl Master so hard. That was in the Go Wheel, Go Wheel Temple. I was eating in the dining hall. I, I didn't know Master show up in the dining hall. He he was standing right next to me. So he said to me, he was very patient, very patient, smile at me. So when we when we are in the temple, if someone don't like this, don't like that, we shouldn't do. So for example, um, when we are in the temple and then particularly we look at those newcomers from a perspective based on your own you know, preference. So you kind of try to correct people, you know, correct this, correct that. So you kind of create a bad feeling to the newcomer. So I got a teaching from the memory master. So I started to, to just kind of pay attention to my problem, not others. So for some reason, I got some kind of liberated feeling. So I just kind of mind my own problem, mind my own business, leave other people alone. So during one of the lecture, and then the, the master yelled at me, scolded so loudly. If you want to be a Dharma protector, this is not how it should be done. If you want to be a Dharma protector, 
you need to hold a Vajra sword and then hold this Vajra sword and then ask everyone, why do you want to do that? Why don't you do that? So that's how you should do it. So I was wondering, you no know, earlier, Mirror Master told me that you no, know, I shouldn't bother people. But now, why you said that I should hold the Vajra sword and to yell at people? So I couldn't figure out why. And then one time I was a driver, you know, drive master to somewhere. So if you have been a driver for Merrill Master, you probably knew that Merrill Master will always you know, sit in lotus and close his eyes and don't talk. And then one day he, he opened his eyes and talked to me. When you open up your mouth to speak is wrong, but when you close your mouth also wrong, what should you do? What should I do? So one time there was a, a delegation uh, to a big kind of auditorium. It's kind of like a, a two layer setup. Now you have a big auditorium in the middle and you have a second floor. People can see on the, on the second floor, look down to the, so I was kind of helping out to set up this Dharma event in that big auditorium, probably about 3000 people. And the master finished the talk and he stepped on the Dharma seat. So I was standing next to, to master. I don't know why. And the master asked me, how many people show up today? I said about 3000 people. Why, why the number I got is about 8,000. No, very exact. No, it's like no, 8,882 or something. So what did you do? Why you couldn't even come the total number? So I was wondering, master was so busy no, hosting, hosting the event. How could he even, no, he figure out how many people So we, we heard about the story, right, of Buddha, right? The disciple asked the Buddha, how many leaves on the tree, right? The Buddha could answer exact number. So for those uh, awakened master, you know, that's just a natural thing. So another story, also a big Dharma event in the city of 10,000 Buddha, the 10,000 Buddha hall. So the attendant will bring a chair so let the master sit right in the middle. And the master will be looking at the, the Guan Yin statue. Everybody will be seeking, sitting around him in a circle. So everybody will be sitting next to, to master. Master will ask question one by one. So people will ask a question, the master said, oh, because you don't know the cause and effect. So if you can know the cause and effect, then you will understand, actually there's another no trouble, another cause and effect will come to you. So actually that's even bigger. So right now, the difficulty you encounter is a very tiny little no, cause and effect, the retribution. So if you endure this difficulty, Actually, you will be okay because the next one is even bigger. So actually this difficulty is helping you out uh, to lessen another big one will be coming in the future. Okay? So we will all kind of, yeah, listen. So we, you no know, volunteer or disciple, sometimes we will have some wandering thought, or maybe, you no, know, the master probably didn't know they didn't know that. Then the master was standing up, and look at that person. Uh, since I was a, 
little all the way to now. I don't do wandering thought. I don't have any sexual desire. So just by these two points, I am qualified to be your teacher. So we can reflect on ourselves. So if someone has just one quality, no, no wandering thought or no sexual desire, either one would be qualified to be our teacher. So I sincerely wish everyone will have a wonderful life, happy, peaceful. So Yong Fa asked, what two qualities? So the member said, since I was a little boy, I never lied. I never lied to people. And then I never have sexual desire. So these two things, these two qualifications, and then is, so I will be able to teach you. So if you can have, don't have these two things, yeah, then you, your cultivation will be good. Yeah, so just want to double check. So one is lying, one is no sexual desire. So Yong Fa Shi asked, so you mentioned earlier, Master scolded you so badly. Do you think he was angry? Uh, I probably don't. Because at that time, I feel very happy. You no, know, I don't bother with this person. I don't bother with this matter. So he, he immediately cut me off such attachment. So all the skanda, all the five skandas, yeah, if you can cut off your skanda, be not so attached to your skanda one by one, your feeling, thinking, sensation, sensation. So Yong Fa Si mentioned a story uh, one desire said, you ask us not to be angry, but you always you know, scold us so badly. So the master says that, no, I was not angry. Remember, master said, I was not angry at all. So why master would uh, scold our disciple so loud, so loudly? He just want to stop our the flow of consciousness. Because we didn't even know that we have such a stream or series of consciousness just keep, keep flowing nonstop. So the master will cut it out for us. So at that time, I didn't do properly. So when he scolded me, I should nail down, bow to him, Amitabha, Amitabha. Thank you for the teaching, but I didn't do that. So, so I didn't react properly at that time. So I think, you no, know, Master, he was never angry uh, with me or other disciples. He was helping me and all other disciples try to. <clears throat> Uh, cut our series of thinking, attachment, cut it out for us. So we have many questions online. So now we already passed 8.30. So I'm afraid to, to hold everyone too long. So Yong Fa Shi said, okay, if you want to be offline, you can. So if you want to stay, you could. So maybe let's pick uh, two or three questions.
So the so the question was about how you how you merge. That's um, about your thinking skanda, how you can merge your thinking skanda. You merge and penetrate. So your first thought and the follow up thought. So these two thoughts, you merge and penetrate them. So that's in the Shuangama Sutra. So someone said that uh, we have heard your name so many times, a lot of publication. So finally see you. So we probably need to find another time for you to share because uh, so many people would like to listen more stories from you. So Yin Fasi make a succession so Joy can share more. So maybe one more minute about cooking. Go wheel, cooking story. One very senior old disciple. And the master always asks this person to cook for him. It's pretty much just one bowl just a little bit bigger than the normal small bowl. So it's a, it's a conky, uh, you cook the rice with soup and a little bit spinach and then carrot a little bit. And then the bai guo is a kind of Chinese bean, very simple, just like that. So I saw that person was cooking and another like a superwoman uh, kind of show up, try to not direct everything. And then that lady was pretty dominated. So, and that lady said, okay, uh, insist uh, how to cook and what to cook. So that lady cook. And then I, I was the person who carried the food to the master. It's on the second floor. So outside the door, the master, uh, uh, if he is busy or resting, so we just just one knock to let him know that the food can live on the side of the door. There's a side table there. If the master said that you can come in, then you can come in to the to the room and leave the food on the table. So I I knocked the door, and then master was right standing right right next to the door. So he hold the can. So the food actually covered with the lid. So he told me, who cook it? Who cook it? So he used the can to knock the food. So they are fire in the cook. I don't eat, take it back. So many fire in the food. So as the other person recook, So I repeated what master said to me to the cook. So find the original cook. So if you have anger, when you have fighting in your mind, and if you cook, you're going to pass on your fire to the food. So it's very important to be very peaceful when you cook. 
So ma master uh, knew everything. I didn't even open the lid of the food and he knew everything. So he knows everything. So I just want to share that with you. So now, uh, Yong Fa would like to probably make an announcement. So next week will be Dr. Chun Ling Wang uh, sharing the update of the pandemic. So the following week will be Dharma Master Hen Lai, another Q&A session. So that will be on the 18th, April 18th. Because there were a lot of questions last time. So he uh, reluctantly to agree to have another Q&A session. So this probably will be the last time. So very appreciate Chui Wei sharing and with the introduction of Dharma Master Yen. So I appreciate all the volunteers. Amitabha.